What is the legal limit of transmission output in the U.S.? When should one register? Uh, by register, do you mean get your ham license? Um, there is no transmission power limit under which you are exempt from needing a ham license. That's a European thing. In Europe, if you're 25 milliwatts, I believe is the limit. If you're under 25 milliwatts, you don't need you don't need like a, their equivalent of a ham license. That does not exist in the U.S. If the transmitter you're using is not Part 15 certified, you need a ham license regardless of output power. That's a common misconception. And just as an example, right? No analog VTXs have Part 15 because they're not FCC certified. Absolutely Most of the none. digital equipment is certified. Yes, although the Vista is not Part 15 certified, is it? Right, right, Technically, that, Which is interesting because the original air unit was Part 15 certified, so presumably the Vista could be Part 15 certified, but they never actually submitted it. Uh, the O3 that's is like, Part 15 certified. Notice says Part 15 with a question mark. I guess that's a good point. We never really explain what that means. So all that means is like... Uh, each of these companies submits to the FCC with typically independent third-party testing and all the documentation to the FCC. The FCC yeah. approves all the testing and output power um, based on that known quantities information. Mm -hmm. And then they give what's called a Part 15 certification to the device. That certification just means that anybody in the United States of America can use that device without a ham license, essentially. That's what that's doing. Um, and if you need to know if that exists, you can typically look on the manufacturer's website for an FCC ID number, and that'll mm -hmm. be for each product. Or you can look up the company's FCC ID number and look through all their devices and then find it. Yep. Good. That's absolutely right. Thank you, Plenty, for noticing that. Not everybody knows what Part 15 is. And that's why you can operate your cell phone or your Wi-Fi router without a ham license, because they are Part 15 certified. The approach that the FCC takes is that either you certify the user, and that's a ham license, and then the user knows what they can and can't do and is trusted to not break the rules, or you certify the device. And a Part 15 certified device can be used by someone without a ham license, but it is locked down. For example, a Part 15 device is not supposed to have antennas that are easy to swap because you could put a high gain antenna on it and you could take it out of compliance. Okay. So like the idea is that is that a part 15 device is locked down to make it sufficiently difficult for users to take it out of compliance. Um, but almost none of the devices we use, the video transmitter specifically, are Part 15 certified. The DJI 03 is one. It is Part 15 certified. The original DJI Air unit, but not the Vista, is another Part 15 certified. Every DJI drone is Part 15 certified. No analog VTXs are Part 15 certified. HD0? Uh, Carl probably got that Part 15 certified because, well, no. Could he have even? I mean, maybe he could. Yeah, Seems the like the kind of thing he would do is part 15 that. The, yeah. The video transmitters are all part 15 as far as I know, and the goggles don't have to be because they don't retransmit. They're a receiver. Yeah. Okay. So HC0, part 15. You're good to go. You don't need a ham license for that. Isn't that nice? Um, yeah. But to recap, I want to get rid of the myth that if you're below 25 milliwatts or 100 milliwatts or whatever, if you're below some output power, you don't need a ham license. That is not true. That has never been true in the United States. 